Hi there everyone, once again we're in the Royal Society Archive, this time we're with Rupert from the library. I like to call him the keeper of the books, mm -hmm. he knows lots about the books here and today he's brought us to the Isaac Newton Corner. Isaac Newton Corner. Yeah. These are all Isaac Newton books. Have a look at this, people. We've got not one, but two first edition Principia's. Those are worth quite a lot of money, just quietly. Look, second and third editions, but all sorts of other Newton books. I think that's the Principia in Russian. That Prin looks like some Scandinavian. But have a look over here, people. Four nondescript old books on their own. And this has the unusual name of Newton Library. We think Newton probably owns maybe a couple of thousand books in his library. And these are the four that have found their way eventually to the Royal Society Library collections. First one, what do we got? So, somebody's helpfully written in pencil from Newton's library. Presented to the Royal Society by Mr G H Wyatt, who I believe gave us quite a few books around the time. First of all, I'll mention the book Plate, which contains the word Barnsley. You may know a large town in the north of England called Barnsley. This is a small village in Gloucestershire, which oh. has a stately home, which housed a lot of Newton's library. Newton didn't have any children. I didn't really leave a will, so they kind of passed down, first of all, to a rather dubious sounding individual who was head of the Fleet Prison in London, at the time when prison owners basically made their money by milking all the inmates for every penny they had. Right. So the warden of the fleet prison had them for a few years, then it passed down to the owner of this uh, country house in Gloucestershire. And then they went up for auction in the 1920s, I think. Mr Wyatt bought a few of them and eventually passed them on to the Royal Society Library. What is the book, Rupert? So this book is basically a dissertation on coins, coins and coinage. And it's from 1700. Was that when he was running the Mint? Yes, he was Warden of the Mint from, I think, 1696. And it's three years before he became Royal Society President. It appears this is written in Latin. Yep, it's not the most interesting one, but we are seeing a couple of shadowy signs of something we're going to see a lot more later. See this page here? Yeah, there are these perfectly straight creases on the two corners. Mm -hmm. Are they what I think they are? Oh, yeah. He's dog-eared pages. He has. Like, to bookmark them. Mm -hmm. And somebody's undog-eared these ones, but in the books we look at next, we'll see some serious... Newtonian dog earring. I think it's noted that when his library was first passed on, there were lots and lots of dog ears in. He's quite famous for this habit. You, you see these books in different collections everywhere and they're dog eared in the same manner. So this is like a Newton trademark. So that is yep. a Newton fold there. It makes feels a bit special. <laughs> that's got to be a perfect three, four, five triangle knowing Newton. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look. Oh, oh there's a proper look. dog ear. Yep. Proper dog ear. Newton dog ear alert. Look at that. <laughs> Even more. Double reverse dog ear. Double reverse dog ear. <laughs> <laughs> that's classy. It takes a special talent to do that. Rupert, as someone who cares for these documents, I imagine you feel a responsibility to not undog ear them. Yeah, if Newton's dog eared them, we leave them as Newton used them. Because apparently he used to use his dog ears to point to particular words on the page. I'm sceptical about this. Yeah, because they are different angles. It does yeah. seem plausible. Yeah, and they're kind of pointing to something. Lots more evidence of dog earing everywhere, but no pictures, I'm afraid. No. What do you want to do next? Let's pick this one. This is a maths book, and I did actually stick a bookmark in this one earlier because it's got a definite dog ear there where he's pointing to the word right angle. And there's a Newton dog ear and as we said a right angle pointing at a right angle we think maybe he's pointing that out. Yeah I said I was skeptical about that theory but he does definitely seem to be pointing to a particular phrase on that page. So yeah. It definitely shows that he used his books they weren't just there on his shelves for decoration. So this is a maths textbook there's oh, yeah. some nice little fold out plates in here and they're on the outer side of the plate so you can have the relevant page open next to it so you can view both at the same time. So it just hangs out the side there. Yeah. It looks like there's some astronomical stuff here as well, yeah. Rupert. It's got parallel Latin and English text. So when Isaac Newton leaned back on the sofa with a glass of wine to read this book, would he have read it in English or Latin? I would have thought he'd be quite comfortable with the Latin. And yeah, you can see it in, yeah. in the paragraphs there, Latin and English next to each other. We see here down the left-hand side, Latin, and then on the right hand side, it's in English. Looks quite easy to understand. It's, it's surprisingly accessible. I thought it might. Yeah, I presume it was a sort of general maths textbook of the time. Another folding out plate here. Fabulous. Okay, let's go to this one. I think this is maybe the oldest. That's cute. So this is a little alchemical textbook and it's got Ooh. notes by Newton. Oh my goodness. Contents list by Newton. He wrote his own contents list and that's his hand, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I think so, yeah. Is that your Newton Objectivity t-shirt? It is my Newton Objectivity t-shirt. <laughs> Hold the two together and see if they match. See the link in the video description. <laughs> so what's he mentioning there? Plato, Pythagoras? Oh yeah, and he's put little page numbers. He's made like a proper index. See what we can find. Oh yeah, yeah there we go. little annotation there. Very fine handwriting, very small. Well, Newton did have very small writing, yeah. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh, we've got three consecutive <laughs> dog-eared pages. That's a triple-decker Newton triple, dog-ear. Triple-decker Newton dog-ear, isn't it? Yeah. Three pages in a row. Two forward-facing and one reversed. All right. Cool, he's <laughs> going for it there, isn't he? 
What's that? Are they dead people? The heading is Anime Extractio. I think I forgot to ask you what this book was about. Alchemy. It's about alchemy. Yeah, one of Newton's great interests, of course. And for those who don't know, how will we describe what alchemy is? The common cliche is turning lead into gold, transforming the base materials of nature with certain magical connotations and associations. That's an interesting image. Oh, yeah. That image gets more horrible the longer you look at it as well. You start saying, oh, there's all the faces there's on the, there and the... There's 13 heads on sticks. He's standing on the moon's face. You're going to get so many comments under this from medievalists actually telling us what this is. Yes. It's a bit before my time period. Do leave a comment. Other than, do these people know what they're talking about? <laughs> Something's had a good chew at oh this dear, over yeah. here. Yeah, there's quite a bit of um, worm damage to the edge of some of these pages. One more. Yeah, and finally... Dog earring annotations, the works, nice illustrations as well, and a great title by Agrippa, who's a 16th century German doctor and philosopher and part-time soldier, and it's on occult philosophy. Another of Newton's interests, obviously. Whoa. And a huge contents list at the front, <laughs> over which the idiot librarian has plonked down the Barnsley book plate as well. You could have put that somewhere else, surely. Oh, let's just put it over Isaac Newton's handwriting. Rupert, that's a crime. I'm... Not physically, but mentally face-palming here, yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. And look at this. This has got writing all over it already. Page one. Is this nice little, lovely little capitals there, although there's a bit of a hole in that. Oh, look at this, yeah. Look, Newton notes everywhere. He's got these little crosses, these little almost like plus signs. What is that? I wonder. I'm sure someone will let us know. I wonder if it's a symbol for a planet or a star or something like that. You reckon that says Sommelier? It does. That was when his wine delivery came out. <laughs> It's interesting, these are all really, really short notes, aren't they? On almost every occasion, it's just like one word yeah. or two words. Yeah, and some quite nice illustrations somewhere around the middle of this book. You could have just dog-eared the page. Oh, yeah, so those are some of those symbols, like the one we saw in the margin. Earth, water, fire. I kind of don't want to skip a page, because every <laughs> page is... Oh, is that him? Could be. That could be the long-lost Isaac Newton will. <laughs> <laughs> we found it. It could also just be his shopping list. This is pretty cool. I wish I'd seen that when I did my Harry Potter library tour last year. The Science <laughs> of Harry Potter. Now, is there any dog earring in this book? I thought there was a massive double front facing. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, there, there we go. go. There we go. See what this is, Rupert? This is a double stack descending dog ear. It is, yeah. yeah. He's full of surprises, isn't he? You never know how he's going to dog ear next. <laughs> I've got to be honest, I'm not entirely sure what those words actually mean. But what I do know is that this is one of the most juicy rows that has ever happened in the history of science. And it involves, you guessed it, the Royal Society, I'm afraid. And this is a collection of correspondence around Isaac Newton and a certain Leibniz. 